There's an old saying that comes from a French writer whose name I forget now, but it goes, hypocrisy is the tribute that vice pays to virtue, which is initially a kind of tricky phrase, so I'll just explain what that means. When you're being a hypocrite, what are you doing? Well, you're saying that you're saying one thing and then doing another, but often it's that you're saying, for example, that something is good and that you should do that thing, but then you fail to do that thing. Or you say that something is bad, wrong, sinful, and then in, in private you do that thing anyway. And why, what, so why is it the case that hypocrisy is the tribute that vice pays to virtue? Hypocrisy is the admission that there is, in this case, hypocrisy is the admission that there is such a thing as, as a good thing or a bad thing. Because when you fail to live up to that standard, you've at least been a hypocrite. You've at least acknowledged the virtue. That's why hypocrisy is the tribute that vice pays to virtue. Now, in today's society, we have come to the opinion that hypocrisy is almost the worst thing there is. You'll very often hear people say that, well, at least he's open about it. At least he's honest about it. You know, this is this is one of the this is one of today's virtues is, is simply openness. You can be as wicked and immoral as you like, but if you're open about it, it's it's basically you're, you're exonerated because, well, at least he's honest. You know, at least he's not a hypocrite. And we don't like hypocrites because, well, they say one thing and they do another. And of course, that's irritating. But if you don't have hypocrisy, then virtue gets no tribute at all. Because in a society where we, of course, are, you know, we are humans, we are fallible, we are likely to do bad things some of the time. And so it's inevitable that there will be some amount of hypocrisy if we live in a, in a society which still values virtue, which still acknowledges that there are such things as virtues. And this is why I think hypocrisy is, in a way, the virtue. It's, it's almost the ultimate virtue because the existence of hypocrisy is really the acknowledgement of there being such things as virtues and such things as sins, if you like. You can use whatever word you like if you don't like the religious connotation of sin. But I think it's, it's an easy word. Virtue and sin. Without hypocrisy, how can we differentiate between these two things? In a society where everyone behaves badly, where everyone is sinning, if you like, um, but is completely open about it, well, eventually virtue becomes totally superfluous because of course there would be no hypocrisy. People would be totally open about being bad and virtue would get no tribute at all from vice. Vice suddenly becomes on a level playing field with virtue, without hypocrisy. We have to ask ourselves, would we rather live in a society where being the imperfect creatures that we are we would often fail to live up to the standards of our virtues, but where we would still at least ad admit and acknowledge that such virtues exist, as demonstrated in our hypocrisy? Or would we rather live in a society where there is no hypocrisy, where simply bad behaviour is excused by openness and exempts us from our moral duty to do good and where all virtue would become totally eroded and there would be no difference between good and bad. And I think this is where we are steadily going now. We are getting to a point where there really are very few things that you can do now which are considered bad. And to you, that might sound like a good thing, but I think it's a bad thing. Um, we, we live in this situation now, don't we, where you, anything goes, really. As long as it's between consenting adults, anything goes. There, there, isn't really, there aren't really actions which are bad per se. 
I think this is wrong because individualism is all very well and good, but you have to at some point ask yourself what's good for the society. You have to take the anthropologist's view, their sort of third person perspective of society and say, well, is a society made up of people who behave in this way good for it? Will it be good for the future of that society? Or would a society where people behave in this other way be better? Uh, and that's a very different thing to individualism, because of course, the anthropologist might observe that there are plenty of behaviours that would not be very good for society, but would still fall into a sort of amoral category, that is, things which are not moral, they're not under the moral sphere, which I've heard argued before. Um, which is that if, if, if something is being done by two consenting adults, then it, it is something which is simply amoral. It, it, it cannot really be considered a moral action or immoral action because it's, it's nobody else's business. Well, that's kind of where we find ourselves today.